Welcome to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, where our goal is to connect listeners to the great outdoors with hosts Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. I'm host Ben Brandell, owner of Meant to Be Outdoors, instructor of outdoor skills, and passionate about personal growth. I'm host Brian Hoffmeyer, wildlife biologist and avid outdoorsman. Welcome back to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Brian, with my co-host, Ben, and a happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. It is Thanksgiving Day. Woo! Well, not as we're recording this, but the day the day this is coming out yeah. is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving. We hope that everybody is planning on eating a bunch of good food, watching some football, and enjoying some time with, with people they love, and uh, getting home and safe and healthy you know people travel a lot during thanksgiving so Mm -hmm. praying for travel is always a really important thing this time of year because it is a blessing to be able to be around those people but we want to get there and get home safely today's episode is going to be about just that thanksgiving and we talk about it a lot this time of year but we're going to really dive in to what the word means the root of the word some scripture, God's word, what he says about Thanksgiving. But of course, like every episode, before we get into it, we need to give our own thanks. You know, I am thankful for thanks. <laughs> because as we we're going to dig into and, and hopefully understand that it comes from someone. Mm-hmm. So I'm thankful for that. And let's just talk about it right now. That's why we give thanks for every podcast. I think it was... Uh, well, how many months ago do we start? Was it a year now? Or Yeah, we started it. We didn't do it at the beginning. Uh, the first several episodes, we did not give thanks. We should go back. Maybe that'd be a good uh, a giveaway <laughs> quiz question. What episode did Ben and Brian start to give thanks at the beginning of each topic? And yeah. We'd have to go back and look. I don't remember, but I it know. has been over a year that we've been giving thanks in yeah. each and every episode. Well, I think it was important because we're in a time in our journey with Meant to Be Outdoors that... Just felt like, I don't know, we were being blessed and, and we didn't know really who to give thanks to or what was going on. And mm-hmm. it was this, this idea and concept of submission, you know, of there are things at play that are bigger than, than just Brian and I. And so how can each time that, that we reach out to a group of people, how can we share Christ, whether we get into the scripture, whether we... Um, even bring up his name, you know, and, and for me, it was that way of giving Thanksgiving, this, this idea that before we give any information out there that, that Thanksgiving is, is given for his glory. Right. And that's kind of why I don't even know that it just happened. And you're like, yeah, let's do it. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. even think there wasn't even much talk. We just, no, I think boom, was, let's do it. I think it was right before we were sitting down outlining the episode, talking about the topic for the day. And you're like, you know what? I think we should start giving thanks. Yeah. Uh, and it just kind of happened. So maybe that was the, the Holy Spirit's guidance and conviction to be like, hey, boys, you need to, Get to give done. some glory here. Mm-hmm. And so we've been doing that, and I think we're going to continue to do that. That isn't to say that it is easy for us each episode to give thanks. There are days yeah, it's hard. that are bad. It's hard. We're it's having hard. bad days. We're in bad moods. Mm-hmm. Things aren't going the way that we expected them to be going. We still have the duty of recording our podcast. Yeah. And so we're not going to just skip over giving thanks, but if you really stop and dig in, there is always something to be thankful for. But I do want to acknowledge that some days it takes us a few minutes or maybe several minutes to actually come up what we are thankful for that day. Well, it, it does, but it's some of that's due to us not giving the same things. You know, it would be easy for us to every day be like, I thank God. <laughs> Right. And roll on. You know, we can do that for, thank for my kids, thank for my wife. We tried to be a little bit unique. I mean, we've repeated some, but. We have. I mean, but I think it's, it's important to give thanks for everything Mm -hmm. and, but to do it, um, genuine, real, you know, of, of real thanks. And so I think that's why it takes, well, I know it takes me several minutes to think in the moment of what am I thankful for right now? Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard sometimes to. Yeah. What are you thankful for today? To share it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I am thankful for today as we record this, so this may change here quickly because it is Missouri, but I am thankful for the weather we have been having. When daylight savings hits and it gets dark early, that takes a toll on my family because we spend so much time outdoors. So it is hard to send my young children outside to play in the dark after supper every night. Like we we love to be outside, but it has been nice enough that even though it is dark, and even though it is already Thanksgiving, 
we can still go outside with just a jacket. We were playing out. We were in shorts and mm-hmm. a jacket last night playing mm-hmm. basketball. Yeah. And that has been – I've been really appreciative of that because I can remember hunting – early in November and having snow and it being 15 degrees. And it's been in like the 60s and 70s and, and then just 40s at night. It's been really, really, really nice. And I've still been enjoying my fall outdoors. Yeah. I mean, the temperatures have been, uh, you can still go to parks. Uh, even some of our core land, you know, they're closed, but you can still go hike them. No problem. And People are still golfing every golf, day. Golf. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, yeah. Saw a guy in shorts with his, uh, he left his gloves in the back of his, his shorts and was coming through Walmart. And I was yeah. like, he must have been golfing. <laughs> he must have been golfing. He's still mm-hmm. wearing shorts out there on the golf yep. course. So that is what I'm thankful that we've been able to just still enjoy some really good outdoor time, even though we're getting into almost late fall and, and beginning of winter here really soon. It's, geez, nearly December already. It's getting close. So, Ben, the reason we're doing this, obviously, it's Thanksgiving. This time of year, I... There's just this total cliche of what are you thankful for? We need to give thanks today. Or you go to the family gathering and the dad there's like, everybody sit down in a circle and give thanks what sure, you're for. One when really, thing that you are thankful really, for. Really. And yeah. nobody wants to do it. Yeah. Nobody wants to do that. And really, it's just because they want to say what they're thankful for. So if you have that feeling, just go ahead and tell people what you're thankful for. Don't make them give thanks. If they want to, they're going to. But there's all these cliche things around Thanksgiving, and you can turn on the TV, you'll see the parade, and everyone just giving thanks, but it's all kind of a shallow thanks. Nobody ever really points to the source of what they're giving thanks for. Nobody ever really talks about what Thanksgiving is or why it's important. So we are going to dive a little deeper into the true word Thanksgiving, Mm -hmm. even its Hebrew roots. We're going to talk about where it comes from scripturally and why it is so important in our lives because let's be honest life is not easy for any of the 7.8 billion people on earth but thankfulness can help i do believe we're going to highlight that but ben i want to know before we get serious well i guess this is a serious question (laughs) but in a different serious Mm -hmm. what is your favorite thanksgiving dish you mean like what, like what color and shape? Like is it glass or porcelain? No, or what's it, your favorite food? Name all right? the food inside the dish. Oh, oh, uh, man! I, you know, I'm very fortunate. Was it hard for you to pick? Blessed and thankful that my grandmother cooks as often as she does for for me and my family. And I'm going to tell you that a lot of times, what we have for Thanksgiving, we still eat throughout the rest of the year. Like like what we have on Thanksgiving Day, we I still get to eat that. She makes it. She Or she makes so much you're eating leftovers all year. No, <laughs> no not the leftovers. <laughs> hallelujah. Um, no, but at an older age, the, honestly, it's cornflake potatoes. Cornflake Now, she makes potatoes. these all the time. Are these potatoes or chunks or hash brown? Like I've had them some different ways, and I like them both, but it is basically like your hash browns, and they put... I don't know. It's not French onion dip, but... Does it have cheese in it? Oh, it's super cheesy, and then you actually take corn flake cereal, and you put it on the top. Hmm. Um, well, I like Frosted Flakes. Could we substitute? Yeah, I'd try that. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> it's it's Thanksgiving, baby. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, that combined with ham, I mean, I'm, I'm more of a ham guy than a turkey guy, hmm. especially on Thanksgiving. So having that ham with those potatoes, I love that. Um, my favorite dish... Is probably that that combo. I mean, that's that's what we have. That's yeah. what I like. I've tried the fried turkey. You know, I mean, it's all really good. Like when when Grandma makes food, I eat it all. Like mm-hmm. I'm grabbing scoops of. But to answer probably what's my favorite Thanksgiving dish is is probably that ham with that that um, uh, not frosted flakes. You said that now it's got yeah. me. But cornflake. <laughs> you know, to have that cornflake like right there, taking bites of both. Next time I, I see her, I'm gonna say, Grandma Carla, can you give me some of that cornflake casserole? <laughs> she'll, yeah, she'll. <laughs> She'll give you the recipe for sure, but I'll have, have um, to have to get me some of that and give it a try. You know, and then and then the normal like the pumpkin pie, mm-hmm. you know, the homemade pumpkin pie as for the desserts, awesome. What about you? Well, this is really easy for me. I am, which as you know, I am not a picky eater. I eat all kinds of crazy things, and I'll try anything one time. So I do have to try a little bit of everything that's there. 
Mm -hmm. But my single favorite thing that when I don't get this on Thanksgiving, and I do miss it sometimes because I have never been to a Thanksgiving meal other than my family's that has this there. And it is true, traditional German stuffing. I don't even know what that means. And so most of the time people have their bread stuffing, Mm -hmm. but the German way, the German recipe is it actually has hamburger mixed in with it and it is cooked inside the bird. Mm. And it is so unbelievably good. It is different than any stovetop or any other homemade cornbread recipe stuffing that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. It is so good. It is like, it has so much moisture in it and all that bread is stuck to that hamburger meat. It almost becomes like one I love it. Yeah, I love it. Put a little brown gravy on top of it. Oh, my goodness. But see, there's always so much of it, and it's such a favorite that you have to cook more than just fits. and Not that much fits inside the turkey. but Right. So there's always one bowl that was cooked inside the turkey. Oh, I bet that's the best. And then the one bowl that was cooked in the oven. We both are good, but. (laughs) You want to get the biggest scoop out of the bowl that was in the turkey. Right. Uh, And when you come back for seconds, you'll have to get it in the oven. And it's still good, but it isn't the same as being cooked in that bird. So there's a lot of awesome dishes out there, but that for me is my favorite. And that actually... That recipe that my mother uses goes back several generations in our family. Um, I have a, a really strong German heritage on both sides of my family, and that recipe goes back several generations. So it's been passed down and is still being used. And I will make sure to get it from my mother uh, before she passes because I want to keep that going for sure. Well, I, I think you should get it from her now so that we can I can try it. I haven't got to try it. You need to make it and try it. Or well, let me try it. Okay, I'll trade you, I'll trade you some of that for some cornflake tater casserole you know brian that that actually sounds like a pretty good trade i i think i'll take you up on that now i'm gonna trade you the recipes though i'm probably not gonna cook it for you okay (laughs) no you just just need to be thankful no matter what no i think we should rope in the people that have the recipe that are best at cooking it just get your grandma carla to make some for me and i'll get my mom to make some for you and then it'll already be done we won't have to cook we'll just get to enjoy the eating i love that Okay. Uh, that sounds and like they're sweet. They're both sweet enough. I think they'll do it. I, I, yes. And I would be so thankful. And speaking of being thankful, what in the world is even Thanksgiving, though? I mean, we just talked about food and our favorite foods and Thanksgiving. But, Brian, that's been – let's go back to school days because when I use the word Thanksgiving, it actually – food doesn't even occur to me. Like, it's not my first thought. My first thought is, like, the pilgrims and Indians. Literally, that's – what I was taught in school of Thanksgiving, and it's the it's the cartoon image of these mm-hmm. turkey fans um, with the headdresses and a basket of gourds in it. Like, I know, and what I don't even know how much truth. Like I accepted that as truth as a kid, but now people are saying like that isn't even all true. That's not even how it all happened. I mean, right. the whole story and who they say the people were, the explorers were, right. they were actually awful and. <laughs> Yeah. So now it's obviously an Americanized holiday several centuries later, and people, I mean, it really has turned into a giant shopping day, and people make a bunch of money off it. But the beauty of it is is that families get together. They take, they make time to get together and share meals together. And I do think there's, there's some real genuine truth and importance in that. Well, there is truth in in all of it. And that truth that's always going to live on is, is actually being thankful. Mm -hmm. And, I think that's what we're wanting to get into and talk about here is what does that even mean? Yep. Like, so, so what does the word Thanksgiving truly mean? Yeah, I mean, where I'm finding this is within Strong's um, Concordance. Am I saying that right? Concordance? Yeah, but uh, Strong's, you know, he's going to break down what the Hebrew is of that word. And I'm going to read some definitions here of it real quick. So the word that we're looking at Hebrew is Tuda. Now, I think people may say Tauda, it is, it's spelt like, if I was going to say it in English, it would be T-O-W-D-A-H, but that's Hebrew. So when I listened to the pronunciation online, it was Tuda. <laughs> so I hope that's, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, but what that means is, is Thanksgiving. And in the Hebrew text, Tuda is used to indicate Thanksgiving in songs of worship. It's sometimes the word is used to refer to the Thanksgiving choir or the procession. Um, One of the peace offerings or like the sacrifices was designated, um, was designated the Thanksgiving offering. And so when you look at what that kind of the word can be used a little bit differently, but it's it's not or it's and. And so we're looking at basically confession, praise and offering. And so you can think of those three English words wrapped up into the one Thanksgiving Mm. of the Hebrew word. Confession, praise, 
an offering. offering. Yeah. The word that comes to my mind when you say all those three words together is is submission. Like to, to be in a point where you are truly going to confess and to give praise to the giver and to offer yourself or your life to the giver. I mean, you are truly getting to that point of submission, and, and God does call us to do that. So I think that's probably where that is pointing from. But I, I like that perspective in that we, we are so used to just saying, really using thankfulness and gratefulness interchangeably as synonyms. Right. We don't get into that context of, of confession and offering. And I think that there's a lot of truth and weight to paying attention to the full definition Right. Of the word. Right. The full definition, you know, I think sometimes it is kind of slanderous when we're around the table and it's like, who's going to give grace? And then someone yells out, grace. Mm. And they, you know, you go to eat. It's mm-hmm. this this idea of like, we're just doing it to do it. Mm-hmm. And, and giving true thanksgiving to confess is tough. I think that's why earlier you said if people don't want to do it, don't make them do it. Because to truly give thanksgiving is hard for people. It's hard because you are confessing, you are giving praise, and in that offering, that submission of all of those things, I mean, that right. that hurts, especially if, if you are wrapped up in your own um, pride, ego. It's hard to release that to give thanks and, and, and to do those things. Well, and, and I think the confession point is so tough because you use the word pride, and you have to let go of pride the moment that you confess. And it may it may not even be confessing to God. You may not even believe in God. Maybe what you're thankful for is that you have an incredibly ses- successful career. But the moment that you give thanks for it, you are pointing to that somebody else helped you achieve it, that mm-hmm. it isn't you and your, your pridefulness. It wasn't all you. And having to admit that to people that maybe you've put a facade on around you, that you achieved all this, it can be tough. Um, but it it is true. You didn't do it all on your own. So I think it is very powerful to humble yourself and to push some of that pride out and to truly speak out what you are thankful for. Absolutely. I, I would like to challenge anyone listening to this on Thanksgiving Day here that as you're going to be with family, um, there's a lot of mixed emotions in that, a lot of feelings. Um, there's people that don't get along with their family and they only get together this time of year. Then you have families that meet all the time, but in this Thanksgiving, it's it's maybe just another an, another day. Like, I hope that everyone stops on this day and thinks about what we're talking about in regards to what Thanksgiving is, and then how can you be thankful for the things that are healthy? So, right. there are things in our lives that are irreplaceable, and then there's things that are replaceable. And when I'm giving thanks, like you gave the example a minute ago of your career job, you know, in reality, those things are replaceable. You mm-hmm. you may have spent a lot of time and energy and, and money and, and resources in your career, but I'm telling you, you can yeah. kick it and go go do something well, else. That's a talk I try to have with my, my son, my oldest son, who's starting to get to that age where he can understand that all the time. When things break, mm-hmm. things break, mm-hmm. man, it's just stuff. Yeah, i I know that stinks that that broke, but it's just stuff. It's okay. It isn't a person. You're not hurt. I'm not hurt. Nobody's dead. We can replace that. Right. Or we can live without it. And so that's the question is what is irreplaceable? Mm-hmm. What, what what can we not live without? But in that moment that you're heading over to your family, I mean, what we can never replace is the people that we have with us in that moment. There may be people that come and go in our lives, but for this day, the people that you're with – that's it. Like, that's who you have in that moment. And this was probably going to, I was going to share this later, but I, I needed to share it right here that for me in Thanksgiving, sometimes I don't have a whole lot of nice things to say. And we, we started this podcast off by talking about sometimes we take several minutes to come up with something we're thankful for. And, and that's a lot of it's because of my heart. Like there are times where I am mad or I'm frustrated and it takes a little while to come down from that to to pinpoint one thing that I can identify that I'm thankful for, you know? And it's going to be the same way whenever I get with a group of people. And so a way to be thankful in that moment is to listen 
instead of speak. And so when you were saying if, if, if you don't have anything to share, then don't share it. But listen to what other people are saying. You know, you Brian taught me this, and we share this with a lot of groups, that it's scientifically impossible for someone to listen and speak at the same time. You can only do one or the other. And if you have, you know, if you don't have something to truly give thanks for audibly out in the open, then truly listen to those people around you that are irreplaceable. Listen to what they're saying, listening to what they're giving thanks for, and listen to them while they're speaking. That is, for me, that's one of the, the best ways to to give Thanksgiving at Thanksgiving mm-hmm. is to, to not run your mouth and to genuinely listen, Yeah, which well, is hard, man. Well, and the word genuine is... That's a whole other one that we can yeah. dive into the definition yeah. of what all that means because it gets tossed around like a, a balloon in the wind all the time now. Well, who's genuine? I Well, they're being genuine, so I trust them. And I always want to say, well, how do you know they're being genuine? Mm-hmm. It just it just comes down to feelings and the way they feel. Yep. But while we were looking into Scripture and reading some other people's thoughts online about thankfulness, I kind of had what I thought was a profound realization or thought. When it comes to Thanksgiving— Christians and non-Christians alike are giving thanks. Mm-hmm. There will be there will be families that don't believe in Christ as a Savior giving thanks for things in their life. But the moment that anyone gives thanks for anything, they are pointing to someone. There is a source of what they are giving thanks for. So I would challenge you to stop and think, what is that source that you're giving thanks for? Mm-hmm. If you're giving thanks that you were able to graduate with your PhD this year, well, where'd the brain power come from and the discipline come from that you were able to do that? You didn't give yourself that brain. Not everybody has a brain that is capable of achieving that. And, and that's just one example, but do stop and think about what you've been given and who you are actually giving thanks for because I think we give this shallow thanks all the time and it's more of like a, I'm glad I have it, mm-hmm. but not truly a thankfulness because once you're thankful, you are thanking someone for getting that. Yeah. You know, I think it's sad that there will be Christians that meet together for this day and they won't stop before they eat and pray. They won't stop and give thanks for this meal and for where they're at Um in this journey and and that's sad too like and hopefully more of more than just god bless this food grace like yeah a, yeah a true some kind of sentiment and emotion to yeah it's powerful that we're together today mm-hmm. that we have an amazing meal we had ovens to cook it money to buy it and that we all are here safe and healthy enjoying each other's company like yeah. something i'm gonna use intimate. the word genuine it's something intimate. genuine yeah and i think it's intimate yeah. it's that's where the genuine comes from is it's it's you're intimately a part of that, like you are sharing how you feel in that moment. Mm-hmm. And I just think, I think too many Christians, uh, I don't know if it's embarrassment or nerves or whatever it is, but um, they don't take this day to to truly stop and, and perhaps be thankful. And, and, and that's because we routinely go, 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 go. And so I hope that people stop today, yeah. listen more. And um, share out loud how they're thankful. Make Thanksgiving more than just a formality of a mm-hmm. holiday. Yeah. Make it a day that it is full of worship and praise and glorification of the reason to be thankful. Correct. Right. Yeah. You know, I mentioned earlier we were going to talk about why it is important to give thankfulness or to take part in Thanksgiving. And I think to look at that, we can look at what Thanksgiving actually does. And I mean the act of Thanksgiving, not the holiday. The act of Thanksgiving actually causes some things to occur that are powerful. And I think that's why people should be stopping and and genuinely giving Thanksgiving. And one is that it it humbles us because we are acknowledging that it isn't, that we are not the source. Mm -hmm. If we are giving thanks for something, we are acknowledging it came from somewhere and I have it, but it was not me. And in that humbling, I think that we find some peace in that mm-hmm. and, and, and acknowledging that we have, and I think you can go in even further and saying, I don't deserve, but I have, you, now you're really humbling yourself. Yeah. I mean, getting into 
fair or not fair, but it, it, yeah, it, just remember that it is better to be thankful even when you're confused about what to be thankful for than to have so much pride and ego that you don't ever share any thanks. Right. You know, like, I'm not saying fake it till you make it, but you do have to, sur- it, it, it is hard to surrender, so you have to surrender a little before you can sur- surrender a lot. Um, but begin there. I mean, you know, you said it humbles us. This time of year, a lot of people, when they get together, start talking about politics, and man, it's nasty, it's brutal, it gets gross, right? Well, but, yeah, and, and the new house they're buying and the new car oh, yeah. they're buying and, and yep. all of these kind of prideful topics. Yes, and, and that's what I'm trying to share. Like, if that's the route you're going to, to be talking about this Thanksgiving, then then listen more than speak. Yep. That, that is a way to humble yourself, I promise. Well, let me read the definition of pride. Yeah. We've said it several times here, and that, that is another thing that giving thankfulness does. Pride and humble are two different things that they kind of work together, but are a lack of humble. But I want to read the word pride because giving thanks pushes pride out. Mm. Pride is a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. So, I mean, it is love of self. Mm -hmm. And so the moment that you start saying, I'm thankful for this, I'm thankful for that, you're acknowledging that maybe it isn't all of you, and let's be honest, it isn't. We like to tell ourselves that. We like to make choices out of our own pride, but pride is the root of all sin. And so to start pushing that out, now you're becoming more like Jesus, and that is what we're called to do, Mm -hmm. to to be sanctified and to edify others. And so let's push that pride out by giving thanks. You know, in those moments, there is a piece of us that uh, we begin to look through differently. So... Like I was sharing, like if if you find yourself um, showing up to these events with other people and you're unhappy, you're dreading it, it's always a pain, uh, I'm, I'm encouraging you to listen more. And by doing so, your perspective will begin to change. It truly will. Yes. And then as your perspective changes, Brian, what, what starts happening a little bit more? Well, joy starts to creep into your life. And, and you sometimes have to be intentional with this. Let's be honest. We all wish that we woke up every morning full of joy. We were full of joy all day long. Yeah. When the day ended, we were still joyful. Right. Now let's be honest again. I don't have very many of those days in my life where I'm just full of joy all day long. However, seasons, man. Each and every day, I do stop, and especially in those low moments when I catch myself or the Holy Spirit reminds me, I do stop and say, what can I do right now? You said the word perspective. Mm -hmm. I change my perspective about what's wrong, and I stop, and I point out to my God and to myself what I am thankful for, and immediately joy starts to creep back in. So if you want to have more moments of joy in your life, Don't make thankfulness just about the day of Thanksgiving. Stop each and every day and give thanks, and you will have more joy in your life. And I'm going to say that confidently because I have been intentionally doing that, and I have to do that sometimes because sometimes I'm really down, Mm -hmm. and I need to lift myself up, and that is by stopping and giving thanks because we get stuck on the bad stuff, but there is still good stuff too. Let that joy fill your heart. You know, and I think it's good to do it right there in the moment. It's actually a lesson that I learned from a pastor. He was just talking about how, and, and this this pastor, he was decently famous. I mean, uh, a lot of people knew who he was. And, and he found himself like when he was walking through the church or at different places after, you know, as maybe as a guest speaker, he was walking through the halls. And people would come up to him and be like, you know, um, I have this going on, pastor. Would you pray? You know, would you pray for me? And and, or would you add me to the prayer list? He's and always getting the bad. He's just always getting yeah. that, that, yeah. And and what he started doing, he started doing two things. One is he told him, no, I'm not adding you to my prayer list, which that shocked me when I heard that. Like, what? You know? And I got to think, if he added everyone to his prayer list. It'd be 99 pages long. Yeah. I mean, how, when would he quit praying? But what he started doing is, is he said, I'll pray for you right now. Mm. And in that, he, it was just a quick prayer over whatever they were, they were asking for. And... And that's what I want to share here in Thanksgiving is that you you may be going through 
a lot of downs more than the ups, especially with with what is going on. There in, may, there, uh, I know a lot of difficult Thanksgivings happen when when it's the first Thanksgiving without a loved one. They they right. passed away yes. between now and the last Thanksgiving. Yes. That can be really tough. It can, and so do that in the moment. Just like when when someone comes to you and says, you know, I'm struggling here. I've tried to change my vocabulary instead of saying, you know what, I'll I'll pray for you. I have been recently and say, let's pray now. And I've stopped with them and I've prayed. Yeah, I, I heard think, you do that to your mom the other day. Yeah. She she said, I think she asked that, uh, yeah, no, she asked you over the phone, will you, will you pray for this uh, once you get off of here? And you said, let's do it. Let's just, let's yeah. get it over. Let's do it. Not let's get it over with, but no, let's do it now. There's no better now. time than the present. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I think the same should be done for Thanksgiving when you find yourself in those moments that um, just ain't, uh, it's just, it isn't healthy. You know, like it's just your thoughts are not there. You need to stop in that moment and and give thanks. You do. And we are an outdoor podcast. So I think we should give some outdoor examples of of how you can do that in your outdoor experiences because they do not always go how you plan or how you want them to. That's true. Sometimes it seems like more times than not they don't go how you planned it. Ben and I, I mean, we tell ourselves, like, especially like before we fish a bass tournament or something, like, today's not going to go no. how we have it in our minds. So let's be thankful. We usually give thanks but, uh, through prayer before we start. And sometimes we stop. Unfortunately, we usually only stop and pray when things are going bad. Maybe we should be more intentional at stopping praying when things are going good, too. It's um, hard, but yeah. It is, I mean, that is, it is tough. But um, in the outdoors, <laughs> Like we said before, it power, part of the reason the outdoor is so powerful, it gets you out of your comfort zone because things aren't going to go the way that you planned them. And I want to use hunting and fishing as a couple examples. You know, more times going hunting, is go, you're going to come home empty-handed than you are do, going to come home with a, a harvest. Yeah. The average number of sets in a tree stand before a bow hunter comes home with a harvest is 11. 11. That's if, I mean, how many times do you hunt? What What was the average of outings? That's you know? what I'm saying. The average sets in 11. So you essentially could get two a day, one in okay. the morning, one in the night. Okay. The average is 11. So you have some, you know, harvest in the first and some harvest in the 15th. Right. And people have different objectives on, on what they're going to harvest too. So that kind of goes into that. But the whole point of even sharing that is that isn't a whole lot of high odds that you're always coming out of there with a harvest. Mm -hmm. Now, you and I were hunting the other day. We shared in the last podcast episode, my thankfulness was that we got to go hunting. We don't always get to go. We got to go. We had actually almost, I'm going to say almost the whole day cleared out. We got up, got out there before sunlight. We were going to stay until about an hour and a half before sundown because we had to go pick up our children. We got to go pick up our children. We got to go pick up our children. See perspective. Great. Now, I was just pumped to be out there, so an all-day sit wasn't a big deal for me. Mm-hmm. However, you were sick. Yeah. You were sick. Mm-hmm. You didn't sleep a whole lot. You were not feeling good. You didn't sound good. You were holding back coughs so that you weren't scaring the deer away. That is so hard, by the way. It I'm is. even trying to do that right now for this podcast. And it's, you, if, it's you're in the, if you're in a quiet forest and you cough, I mean, you might as well be dropping a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it's loud. It's, it's yeah. loud. Yep. But so you actually had to get down out of the tree stand and hike back to the truck. I need to get some medicine. Need to get some medicine. I, I want to get some lunch, take a break. Yes. I need to get warm. I was cold. But while you were gone, I got to see deer. Yeah, you did. Which was awesome. So mm-hmm. I got to spend some time by myself in the forest and see deer. Then you came back. Then more deer started coming. Right. Getting towards the end of the day, we had a really nice. Nothing was in range though. Nothing, Nothing was, was in range. Nothing didn't harvest anything, but we're getting to watch hunt. them. Right. Could have got super frustrated and mad that nothing was in range. Mm -hmm. Well, next thing you know, here comes a beautiful buck. Couldn't tell if it was eight or nine pointer. Really nice deer. Mm -hmm. And he was working down to us. He gets like to 30 yards, but he's in the brush. And then he starts to kind of go the other way. And he just kind of stays out in the brush about 40 yards. And then he gets to a point. We watched him for several minutes, 10, 15 minutes. He gets to a point where he needs to take. I'm going to say two steps, but it may have only been like a step and a half. Just a few more feet further, and he was going to step into my shooting window. Right. I mean, 
I'm knee knocking, nervous, buck fever, standing up, ready to sh- ready to shoot, let this arrow fly. And he stops and he turns around and he walks the other way into the abyss, and we never see yeah, him, never again. him again. Yeah. Now, in the past, I've been bow hunting a long time and hunting a long time. I can remember a time where I would have been absolutely ticked off. I'm talking I might have punched the tree. I would have sat, put my hands on my face, and pouted. I may have even said some dirty words to myself that I shouldn't have said because I wanted to harvest that buck so bad and I didn't get to. Now, life, God using life, has changed my heart and my perspective. And, I, and I'm and i going to give him full credit for that. I don't want to take it. I don't get to hunt a whole lot anymore. Mm-hmm. The places I do get to hunt are a fraction of the quality of, of where I used to hunt 10, 15 years ago. I was so excited. I turned to you, and you and I were both so excited. We were saying things like, this is just such a great day. Mm-hmm. This is a great day. We got to see these deer. They, some deer came and laid down and slept by us, and we just got to watch them sleep and, and do their deer thing. We got to see this buck. There was another smaller buck before that that never came into range. Mm-hmm. We were just having a great experience, and we were giving thanks for it. We were giving thanks, and in the middle of all that joy because of the thanksgiving that we were giving. So while you were giving thanks While I was giving thanks. Out loud. I feel like God rewarded us, Ben, in Could've. that moment Could've. while I was out loud giving thanks. You said, buck, 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 buck. And I turn around, and here comes this nice nine-point buck mm-hmm. running down the draw behind us. Ben, he ended up running right by our stand and stopping at 23 yards. Right. And if you go to our Facebook page, you'll see we harvested this buck. Yep. We were able to find it. The shot was true. I was so joyful and emotional. That was a great shot, by the way. Well, thank you. I mean, you you smoked it. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. We we found it, and we were able to take pictures and grin and show my kids and share and all that. But I feel like that maybe I wouldn't have been ready enough. Maybe God wouldn't have even rewarded me with that deer had I not been giving thanks for the day. I was totally content and happy with the experience we had before I ever harvested that deer. I know, and I also want you to think about it through this perspective because this just came to me while you're telling the story, and you and I have shared the story with each other and family a little bit already. But you know, whether whether you were rewarded, that word always kind of makes me uneasy when I say reward. But I mean, let's say that we were being rewarded for that. Scripture praise. does say that that God rewards our obedience. I get you. I get you. What I'm saying though is is that your perspective was different in this moment in time. From your past experiences. Absolutely. You know, this deer that came through, you weren't harvesting this deer for another man, for a TV for people to see, Mm -mm. for your fame. This was just a hunt that was for you personally. Mm -hmm. And I find that when you and I are out, let's get into fishing. When we're out even fishing, when we are, it, it just feels like more of when we are doing these things for other people, um... Not for our reward, but for for others. Yeah. Maybe even for food to take home to the right. family. I always feel like we are more successful when we are. And we don't even know we're in that perspective, but when we're doing that, I feel like we do better than when we're truly trying yeah. to do it for for we're, our. We're, we're doing it for ourselves and the glorification of of God, not for the attaboy yeah. from anybody else. Right, yeah. and I, and I, for me, that's why I feel like that hunt yeah, for wow. you was was so rewarding. In in being grace filled and in Thanksgiving, it was rewarding because there wasn't an agenda. Mm-mm. It was it was we want to go out and harvest, we want to get food, and we enjoy this time we get to be in the wilderness with these animals, with God and His yeah, creation. We, we would have harvested one of the does that correct had come if it came in. Yeah, yeah, I was wanting a shot. <laughs> yeah, I was wanting more meat. But well, I would have let you shoot this buck, but he's just a little too far away. He was a little bit for for how I shoot, but. I was thankful to be a part of it, and I even got it on video, yeah. you know? And so to even just... And yeah, we had that memory to look yeah, back on. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. It, it was, awesome. yeah. Tru- truly thankful for that day and, and how it all played out. And there's a long list of thanks there, but it, it was a special day. But you mentioned fishing, you know? It doesn't always into the catch. I mean, we have had some great tournaments. <laughs> we've yep. had some bad ones. Mm-hmm. Even just going out fun fishing, we've had days where we've caught... 50 to 100 fish in a day, and it is so much fun. But the reality is that not every day 
is like that. We have also had days where we went out and we caught zero. Mm-hmm. And it is deflating. However, in those moments, if you can stop and, and you and I kind of get into this sometime, oh man, we stink. We need to sell our stuff and get rid of this. But if we can stop and say, you know what? We had the time, the gear, the money, the truck, the gas, the boat to go do all this, that we live in the Ozarks where we can choose from like 10 different gorgeous lakes to go fish and give thanks for all those things and say, you know what? We're going to have time to come back and do this again. And I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Those are, that is a way to change that perspective and have joy. Even when things don't go the way you want or thought they were going to. And you can do that outside of hunting, but outside of fishing, just in your everyday life, maybe you're camping and you got awesome new uh, tent you want to go try out and it rains the whole time and all you get to do is stay inside the tent. Well, you really got to try that tent out, so yeah. give thanks for yeah, it. Thanks, yeah. Maybe it leaked. Change your perspective and say, you know what? I'm thankful that I found out it leaked and I'm okay, so I don't have to experience this anymore. Or maybe I had don't have to experience this when it's 40 degrees and it's a danger. There's always a way to stop and change your perspective, and there's something to give thankful for, always. Even in really, really bad moments, we're kind of giving light examples. Sometimes it's very extreme. But I really do believe that there is always a way to find something to be thankful for. Well, here's what I'm thankful for, that the words hunting and fishing are named correctly. Because when you and I go out, we don't always catch fish. So it's definitely not catching. It is (laughs) called fishing. And we have to hunt our hides off. (laughs) Yeah. Because we don't always get a kill. We don't always get a harvest. And so those names are perfect for that. And I'm thankful for that because if... It was called catching. I feel that you and I would have had to quit a long, long time yeah. ago. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Or buy bigger freezers. Too. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to give kind of a real life example. And this one is real recent for me as, as we're sitting here recording this today. You know, I have, I had, I should say had as past tense. I had a really nice refrigerator and it was only four years old and did someone call you and ask if it was running? No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just making sure that this wasn't a joke coming so up here. Have to go catch it. <laughs> yeah. Bad joke central. That's like numero uno. All no, right. So you had a, you had a like, refrigerator. You I had a refrigerator. It was like 10, 1030 at night. And my wife says, hey, I think something's wrong with the ice maker. And I go over there and there's water everywhere dripping out of the ice maker in the door. I open up the freezer and everything inside is melted. So kind of start to collect the scene there, look at the settings. Is it plugged in? Okay, I hear it running. Well, upon further analyzing, the compressor on this refrigerator was bad. It was only four years old. Super expensive fix. Expensive part, expensive labor. It costs as much to get that fixed as it does to buy a new refrigerator. So now I'm going through the process of going and buying a new refrigerator, trying to save all the food possible. Thankfully, I have a garage fridge and a freezer downstairs and some coolers, and I'm packing all this stuff. When I should be going to bed, I'm a little mad, a little frustrated. My refrigerator shouldn't be broken. And I'm stopping, and I'm giving thanks that I even have a place to put all this food, that I have another refrigerator. The night gets later. I'm still up by myself, working on trying to preserve all this food so we don't lose everything, thinking about, I'm starting to look now at how much refrigerators cost. Now I'm thinking about how much money I have to go spend when I really don't need to be spending all this money. Starting to get a little angry. And then I had this thought. What a blessing it is that I even need a refrigerator. (laughs) I don't know the number, but it has to be millions of people on this planet don't even need a refrigerator because they don't have enough food to put in one. I need a refrigerator because I can go to the store any day of the week and buy whatever I want there and fill that refrigerator up. So one, I need it. Two, I already have another one that I can put stuff in in the meantime. So just stopping when things are going bad and thinking about, you know, it is really bad that I have to go spend $1,500 on a new refrigerator. But you know what? I I do have it. I do have $1,500 that I can go give someone and get a new refrigerator. But backing up even further than that, trying to change that perspective. And it did bring in a little joy. And it gave me enough strength and courage to get through what I didn't really want to get through, which was getting another refrigerator. 
Now that's kind of still ongoing because I got a new refrigerator and it's broken too. <laughs> so God's really working on I'm, it, isn't he? I'm going yeah. on my third refrigerator now, mm-hmm. so I'm really having to stop and be thankful that I need a refrigerator so I can power through. But I am going to end up with a refrigerator at the end of it. And God is going to work through that. And I'm thankful that I get to shop. I'm going to go spend some time with my wife, just the two of us. And I'm going to be thankful for that time, even though it is shopping for a refrigerator. Yeah, I mean, you know, there are people that can't afford refrigerators. There's people that don't have refrigerators. And and they're going to buy things from the store that don't need to be refrigerated, right? And so what a blessing mm-hmm. and more to be thankful for if, if you have these luxuries be thankful for them. most people like that having a refrigerator isn't it is a luxury it, <laughs> it is. is a blessing um so not even that we put them in the kitchen right next to where we need them right like if yeah. you cook here you put your fridge right there like yeah. and then the old cellar you had to go outside and go down and get that. i mean yeah, it, we we live a comfortable and, and blessed life so many people and and somebody that always definitely has it worse so you can stop and be thankful you know paul in 1 Corinthians, he posed a question. I'm, I'm going to say it was probably a rhetorical question. He wasn't really looking for an answer. He was really trying to get his, the Corinthians to stop and think. It's 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 7. And the question he asked, What do you have that you did not receive? So you, this moment, hearing that, stop and think. Can you think of something in your life that you have that you weren't given? that you didn't have to receive. Now I'm going to stop and say that you didn't think of anything because there is nothing. Even down to the mind, the body, the position, the place that you live, any of the skills that you have, experiences, opportunities, everything in your life, you have had to receive that. It was given to you. You didn't derive it of yourself. And I think that is the true position of thanksgiving of completely dying to yourself, that full submission because of the definition that you read earlier of mm-hmm. of confessing and, and giving. Like it is where you need to be to truly be in the mind of thanksgiving. And we do know, Ben, that giving thanks exalts the giver. So whether I'm thanking you or I'm thanking God, the giver with a capital G, We have to be careful that what we are giving thanks for doesn't become that God, because now we're getting into a bad spot. You know, and I think where I see this a lot is award ceremonies. You know, I watch, I used to watch them a lot. I I don't even know most of the singers and actors and actresses anymore, but you, when, when your local television shows an award show and these famous people get up, I'm always interested, like, what I hold on to in that moment is, are they going to give thanks? And when they do, who's it to? Mm -hmm. And maybe one out of the, let's say, 150 awards that are given out, I don't know the stats on it, but it seems like only one will give God any glory, Right, you know? And so when they do, it, like, it excites me. I'm like, oh, yes, you're doing the right thing, you know? Majority of the time, though, they're thanking the people that they owe, you know, their producers, their yep. sound, their they did stuff for them, did yeah. stuff for them, you know, but it really makes me uneasy when they get up and they toot their own horn in this Thanksgiving. Like it's not even a, they're not even really giving up and giving thanks. They're, I they're, work so hard for this. I work so yeah. hard for this. And I did, you know, in that, that makes me feel really uneasy and perhaps sad for them. Um, because that's, that's not true Thanksgiving. They're, they're feeding their own ego. And, Man. The word the word that comes to my mind is idolatry. Yes, like you you are making something or someone a god who isn't. Yes, and that's so. Make sure that your source of thankfulness, who you're giving it to, it, it make sure you're sending it to the right Correct. spot. Because when you begin to that I I I, it is a worship of yourself, mm-hmm. and you may become your god that that you're worshiping, and that's a scary place to be. And for all the other fa- false idols out there, like the false gods out there and all these idols, just phew, well, be I mentioned, cautious. I mentioned career earlier, and I think that's another one that we hear a lot and we see it in TV and the American culture just really raises it up on a pe- pedestal. But people will thank for their fancy house and their cars and their land and everything that they have. They thank their career for it. Well, right. they're, they're making, right. they're idolizing 
their career, one, they're saying, well, I'm awesome because I did it. But right. two, they're saying like that career is the God that that their career has given them all this. Well, that isn't that isn't truth. And you are idolizing something that can't truly give. Yeah. God gave you the opportunities, the brain, the fingers, whatever it was, the skills that it allowed you to do that career. It was given to you and it can be taken from you just as easy. So make sure you're giving that thankfulness to the right spot so that it, it isn't taken from you. You know, Ben, before we close, I know we gave thanks at the beginning, but I just want to take a moment, a serious moment for each of us to give the two things that we are most thankful for in our lives. And while you're listening, the listeners, I hope that you are stopping and thinking, what are the two things that you are most thankful for? And then after we give that thanks, uh, I kind of want to make a point about uh, what we're giving thanks to. Yeah. I, I'm going to add, I'm going to say instead of two, three things really quick. Um, first is a creator. Um, I'm truly thankful that and it was it's tough because you have to go through the hard times to sometimes to to get that joy and to 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 understand what truth really is but i'm very thankful that that when i die i know that i'm going to get to be with him completely and that alone is enough i mean that's that is my hope that is what drives me each day i struggle with living day to day in regards to this hope of being on this earth because to me it's nasty. Like this earth is broken and it hurts. Um, you can see joy and find joy in his creation. But until I'm with him, man, it, it's it's a struggle. And so I want to thank, give thanks to the creator for saving me, truly saving me. Second is for my wife, my kids, uh, my whole family, my mom, dad, all my extended family, stepdad, everyone that's that's had an impact in my life, you know. I thank them because I wouldn't be where I'm at today without them through God. And then lastly, I want to thank other people that are not family but play important roles in my life that that listen to what God say to them to steer and guide me because of my failures, I struggle to hear from God daily. I struggle to listen to him daily, and I need those men and women in my life that are going to help steer me through God's word um, of where he wants me to go. And so those three groups, um, being the creator, being my family, and being everyone else, um, I wouldn't be Ben. I wouldn't be able to to have the relationship with, with the creator um, without the creator and all those people. So thank you. Yeah, I knew what your answers were going to be, even though we didn't talk about this before. And you, you can probably guess that my answers are going to be very much the same or very similar. First and foremost, the thing that I'm thankful the most for, and I think a lot of Christians know, we know, we know that we should say this. Yeah. But I think it's a whole other thing, and I think saying it is obedient, but I think it is a whole other thing to truly stop and think about and, and move it from just a thought to a to a feeling, to put it in our heart to what it truly means and remind ourselves of the gospel as, as possible as we can. You know, Ben and I, we, you and I were just talking earlier today that everything in the Bible points back to the gospel. Like that is the most important thing in there. There's other things in there that we can disagree on, but the gospel is essential and the truth of it. And that is what I'm so thankful for is that Jesus Christ came to this earth and willingly died spilled his blood because he knew that there wasn't a person on earth coming after him that could live sinless. And I think a lot of a lot of times Christianity gets this bad look of of well they're Christians and they still do that. Well mm-hmm. I'm here to tell you that isn't what Christianity is about. We still sin, we still have sin in us. Christianity is about that Jesus Christ came and three days later he rose again defeating death, defeating Satan covering our sins. He we are now righteous in the eye of God because God's blood is covering all of our sins, all the bad things that we do. He is truly saving us. We can't not sin. We can't not. We know what we're supposed to do. 
yet we still do the wrong things so many times. Paul in Scripture talks about, why do I still do these things even though I don't want to do them? Mm -hmm. And that is why we needed Jesus Christ. And that is the hope, that is the promise that we are saved, truly saved. Life on earth, you t- you kind of echoed it, is so hard. It mm-hmm. is hard to have hope every day here on earth. We want people to come tell us we have the cure for cancer. You're never going to have to suffer from it. We want people to come tell us you're going to get a million dollars. You're never going to have to worry about money again. We want people to come tell us your kids are never going to be hurt. You're never going to have to deal with the loss of a loved one. But it isn't truth, and nobody's ever going to come tell you that. But it is truth that you can live eternally And that when you leave this earth to go be with Jesus, if you follow him and accept his gift, that's all you're doing is receiving that gift, that all that stuff is going to go away, the pain, the hurt, and it's going to be joy and thankfulness all the time. It isn't going to be moments of it like it is here on earth. It's going to be constant, and I look forward to those days. Secondly, and I'm an emotional man, so this will be hard for me to get through, but my wife and my kids... Every single day that I wake up, I can't wait to go hug them and tell them I love them, all of them. Um, And that makes every day, for me, it makes every day worth living here on earth. No matter what I have to go through that day, it makes it worth it for me. Because I I just, you don't know how long they're going to be in your life. You don't know how long you're going to be in theirs. Mm -hmm. But each day that you wake up and you get to hug them, It's better than any of the bad that's going to happen throughout the day. So try to enjoy those moments and be intentional in those moments. So I'm really thankful that I've had a lot of days getting to wake up and hug them and that I got to do it today. And I pray that I get to do it tomorrow and and many days going forward. Uh, And and yeah, there's a lot of people in my life that have influenced me and and stepped in and and guided me and gotten to me where I I am today. And, And I'm thankful for them too. And we could give thanks forever because I've been on this planet for 35 years and Every single thing that I have or have done, like I mentioned, is is from God the Father. So to stop and give thanks for all that, there's not enough recording on on our our computer here. There's not enough memory space to do that. But I just encourage you today, listeners, stop and give a genuine thanks. Not a shallow thanks. Push your pride, push, push your pride out. Be humble. Acknowledge the source of what you're giving thanks for, where Mm. it came from. And do know that when you stop and give thankfulness, whether you're a Christian or not, you are acknowledging that it came from somewhere. And so stop and think about where that came from. And then I want you to think for a moment about everything that Ben and I just gave thanks for, everything that you're going to give thanks for if you were to make your list of top two or three. And I'm going to guess that all of those have something to do with with giving life, a person that is a life, the life that Christ gave you. You know, Ben, you you talked about off air, you talked about, well, what about someone that lives in a village that that doesn't, has never heard the gospel, that doesn't Mm -hmm. even know the name of Jesus, but they've experienced creation. If you were to ask them, they'd probably say, well, I'm I'm thankful for the rain that grew my crops. Well, why are they thankful for the crops? Because it gives them and their family life. Like what people are giving thanks for, usually the top of their list of thankfulness is things that are giving life. And so again, where did life come from? I pray that that's on your mind and your heart as you go through this Thanksgiving and that you just truly enjoy time with your family and friends and know that you'll enjoy it more if you're acknowledging the Creator and the True Giver, capital G. You know, before we wrap it up, Brian, uh, a couple things that I want to share. It's on my heart. Whatever traditions you have at Thanksgiving, keep them going, you know. I know that there were times where me and my uncles, we'd go crow hunting on Thanksgiving or some weird, maybe squirrel hunting or rabbit hunting or, or whatever your outdoor traditions are, keep them. But those things are honestly replaceable. Like, like the irreplaceable is the moments that you're with your family out doing those things. And so if your family doesn't enjoy the outdoor stuff, man, that's sad. Maybe go on the back porch, you know, try to get them out a little bit, but maybe go outside and just throw on the football outside. But my challenge to you is to definitely get out outdoors. And second is, if you dread going to be with those people, if there's a little bit of dread inside you, I challenge you to to not speak and to listen. Because if there is dread, you have this dread, 
I imagine someone else in that group does too. And you may you may feel it's the other people that's causing the dread, but they may also feel that you're the one mm-hmm. that's causing the dread. And so this is a tough time of year when, when people feel feel like they're supposed to get together, even when they're maybe not healthy enough to get together. And that's what I want to challenge you is go in with a thankful heart and a listening ear. And that's enough. There's nothing more you need to do. Just do that, be there, and find those moments of joy. Um, Brian, thanks for sharing your story. Thanks for sharing your heart. Um, I think people need to hear it. And from me, I hope everyone has a safe and very thankful Thanksgiving. Yeah, very thankful. Happy Thanksgiving. I hope your food is all good. There's no crazy family food poisoning stories that we need to hear about. If anybody needs a listening ear, please reach out to us. Ben and I love to be the listening ear, the shoulder to lean or cry on. M to be outdoors at gmail.com is a great way to reach us. You can also direct messages on Facebook or Instagram. Follow those account- accounts as well. You'll be able to see the pictures from some of our stories about the deer we harvest and things like that. We will be back next week with a brand new episode of the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. We hope that between now and that time, you remember you are meant to be outdoors. Thank you for listening to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, hosted by Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. Please help us by subscribing. Also, follow along on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook.